Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Straight Talk. This podcast is brought to you by the good folks of Young Evangelist Ministry, where we bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to his children one encounter at a time. I am your host, Brother Daniel. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and I pray that you are all doing well at this time. We are happy to be back with another episode. Today's episode is a very special episode. I have a very special, special, special guest today. Uh, he's a brother in Christ, and his name is Pastor Billy Sabu. Uh, many of you have seen him, whether you are in the Boston market area or you are part of the African community social community and you've seen him preaching. He's a very powerful man of God um, who has taken the time to spend with us uh, this portion of our, our episode to discuss on today's topic. Pastor, how are you doing? I do well. I'm very well. I'm so excited to be here uh, connected with you guys. Thank you, man of God, for inviting me. I was really excited when you told me that I'll be participating in this broadcast podcast. I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I cannot just wait to pour out to the people of God that are expecting a great word from the Lord tonight. And uh, I'm just excited. Pastor, today's topic we're going to discuss is going to be titled Finding Peace Within the Storm. Wow. Wow. Powerful. I'm saying that again. That's finding peace within the storm. Um, the 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 Webster's Dictionary, if you look up the word peace, uh, it defines peace as freedom from disturbance, tranquility, oh. or its likeness. Well. So it is to be away from any kind of disturbance that brings about anger, brings about fear, brings about uh, just any kind of turmoil, pretty much per se, or its likeness and tranquility. So to be self-centered, uh, uh you know, low centered and gravity and all that such. But the Bible, when we look at the Bible, it oh. it, it talks about peace in so many ways, oh. right? In so many, so many ways. I was looking and I was doing research before this interview to pinpoint exactly what does peace mean in the Bible. The amount of results that I got back is too much to bear. So we're going to try to keep it as minimum as possible. To you, Pastor, what does peace look like? Well, peace... Peace is a it, it, it's a it, it's a very easy word to define, but also a complex word to define. Peace it's not just a word, but peace is an experience. Peace mm. is an experience that we encounter, and you know I only can define peace according to the Word of God because actually I have never personally experienced peace until I have met Christ. So pretty much for me, peace it's first of all it's an heritage that the presence of God gives us. Mm. Every time we encounter God in his presence, the first response of God's presence when we encounter with him is peace. Wow. Peace is the language that God speaks to us, his children. And, wow. uh, and uh, we can actually even read it in the Bible if you allow me to, uh, yes. to, uh, to go ahead and just, uh, uh, just give a little definition of the peace in the Bible. I'm actually going to read from the book of John. John wow. 14. If you have your Bible, you probably can read it from your version. John chapter 14, verse 23 to 27. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Praise the Lord. Pastor, you're, going ahead, jump, you're jumping ahead of our closing verses. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That is okay. Let's dig into it now. Yes, sir. Go ahead. You can read from your version. Okay, my version, the book of the book of John, chapter 14, verse 23, all the way to 27. And I read in the name of Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, sir, amen. Jesus answered and said unto them, If a man loves me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which you hear is not mine, uh -huh. but my father, but, but my father's which sent me. These things I've spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, 
shall teach you all things and bring you all things to your and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you peace i leave with you uh -huh. my peace i give unto you not as the world giveth give I, I to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid then bible says amen amen i love that i love the fact that jesus tells the disciples that the one that loves me will keep my word mm -hmm. and i will not leave you because jesus was getting uh, get, go, going you know getting into you know transiting into another season you know right. leaving the disciple and going back to to, to, to the father, the Bible says that Jesus said, I will not leave them alone. But the Amen. one thing he gave them, he said, I give you my peace. I, right. I will leave you my peace. So when someone encounter Christ, the first thing that Christ gave them as an heritage is peace. So you mm. ask me a question, what is peace to me? Peace is an element that I've, I, I've experienced when I encounter God. And I believe every time we, you know, we come in the presence of God, the first thing that God gives us is peace. Not only when we come into the presence of God, but mm. the peace that God gives us follow us everywhere. It, it, it follow us in every domain of our life. So uh, when someone comes to Christ, when someone comes to Jesus, he saved them. He purified their sins. Mm. Give them peace through the Holy Ghost. So that's peace to me. Peace is the fruit of the spirit that we have gotten from Christ when we were saved. That's Amen. pretty much what I will say. Amen. Yes, 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 that is true. And uh, uh, it's understanding to, to a lot of people that in this time and age, in this day and age, it's, it's kind of hard to be at peace with everything or for everyone. All right. And as children of Christ Jesus, as believers, there's one thing we understand, like Pastor said, it is an inheritance. It is a gift that God gives. Like the Bible just told us, Jesus says, it's a gift that I give unto you. Not like the world giveth, but I give unto you. So there's kind of almost, he pretty much is trying to distinguish between the two sense of peace. Whereas the peace that God gives can only be given to bring forth nothing but greatness. The peace that the world tries to offer brings the illusion of peace, but not inner peace. Um, that's why when Jesus appeared to the disciples in John chapter 20, verse 19, after they were shocked and they were afraid, Jesus said, peace be unto you. He restored them with that same sense of calmness. Don't be afraid. So that is a great response, Pastor. That, that's, that's very powerful. Going on to the next question. What prevents us as a person or as children of Christ this day and age to have peace at mind? Do you think there's certain things that allows us to not automatically go to that mindset? Like you said, for you, it's a gift. For you, it's almost a, a, a sense of the first thing that God gives us once we you know, accept them in our life as Lord and Savior. So in today's world, what prevents a person from having that peace of mind? Well, well, uh, to pinpoint at what you actually said, uh, b based on the first question, uh, I believe peace, peace is defined by what we hear. Mm. Uh, I, not everybody defines peace the same way. Mm. And the second question actually is really in relation to, and in re it's actually related with the first question. What prevents us from having the peace? Mm -hmm. Well, what is peace? That's the first question that somebody would, you know, should ask themselves. Because Correct. people define peace based on what they have in life. I'll give you an example. Not to be funny, but certain mm -hmm. people will be like, well, I was really troubled you know, for a season of my life until I met that girl. When I met right. that girl, you know, I got peace. You know, right. when I when I, I got that new job, I got promoted. You know, I was really peace. You know, peace in mind because of my financial situation being established and stable and mm -hmm. whatnot. So people define peace based on events that happen in their life, based mm. on you know you, you know the people that they meet in life. But actually, what prevents us to have the the perfect peace is our definition of peace. That's actually mm -hmm. the first thing that prevents us. When you define peace as something that a human can provide to you, man, let me tell yeah. you, you will never really be able to experience the peace that God, the Bible is speaking about. There are two kinds of peace 
on earth. They are a temporary peace and mm-hmm. an eternal peace. Correct. A temporary peace is a peace that you 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 can get from a person, you know, mm-hmm. from a relationship, from a financial situation being stabilized, from uh, get, getting married. But let me tell you, you can get married to the great lady ever in town. And when mm-hmm. she stopped pissing you off doing certain things, she used to be your peace, but she will not, no longer be your peace because of the attitude or the behavior they may have in the future. Right. A peace that human can provide, it's temporary. But the peace that Christ gives us in his word, it's permanent. So the only thing that prevents us from getting the peace that God is providing, it's us having a wrong mindset. It's us mm. finding our peace from things of this word. And I would like to tell somebody that is listening to me, there's nothing on earth that you can, you can do or get in order to give you peace in your heart. There's nothing. No, no money, no job. If you think your job can give you peace, well, you will give you peace for six months and you'll be tired and sick of your, of your, of your, of your, of your manager or your boss. And you know what not. But the peace that God gives, it's eternal. The peace that God gives affects every domain of our life. And the second thing I will say about the question, the only thing also that prevents us from having a peace, it's not being able to have a peaceful relationship with God. When mm. somebody is not in a relationship with God, that person cannot experience permanent and eternal peace. Wow. You know what? Wow, wow, wow. Living in sin, living, you know, uh, uh, against what the word of God says, that person cannot experience peace. The perfect peace comes when we are in perfect relationship with God. And I will be honest and I'll I'll tell you that when Jesus came on earth, he did not Mm -hmm. come to establish a religion. No, Mm -hmm. he did not come to establish uh, 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 churches, big churches. No, Jesus came to establish Peace between us and God. So Mm -hmm. when you encounter Christ, he forgives you of your sin, purifies you of your sin. He puts you at peace with God. So the only thing that prevents us from having peace, it's not being able to have a perfect relationship with God. Wow. The third third thing, and I'll I'll close by that, the third thing that prevents us to from experiencing the peace that the word of God is providing is us not being able to maintain or to take care of the relationship that we have with God. You can encounter God and receive Christ in your life today, but if you don't stay in his ways, you don't do mm. his will. Not, it's, I'm not saying that being saved, it's not enough. Yes, being saved is, is enough, but maintaining yourself in the ways of God will also maintain your peace for a permanent moment wow amen amen it's like it's like when you buy a flower right you want you buy a flower and like, man this is a great looking flower i want to take care of it nourish it the only way to make sure that flower stays alive and nourishes if you have to pour more into it that's right spiritually when we're not pouring more into ourselves, like the bible says we need to be fed the word we need to be living according to the word if we're not pouring the word back into ourselves to make us grow spiritually. Like pastor said, we won't experience that true inner peace. Wow. 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 Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for this message. So going on to the next question, but before we do that, like we said, the topic is finding peace within the storm. The first thing I think about, or what the Lord has revealed to me about this subject, like you said, peace is what, what people define it as based on what's around them or what brings that peace to them. There were a certain group of men when they went to the boat or they were crossing across the river with Jesus Christ. To them, everything was okay. To them, the world was fine at that moment. Okay, the Lord said, let us go across. And we're going to read this, uh, Pastor, if you have your Bible, if you please would read uh, the book of Luke chapter 8, 22 to 25. But the Bible, before we, Pastor reads, it's it's showing us that it was Jesus that told them, let's go across, right? To them, everything was fine. Everything was okay. Their world was okay. Jesus said, let's go across. And what they encountered brought forth a disturbance into their world. It created chaos, trouble, and it created uh, uh, 
almost a conclusion to their life. They were terrified, and we'll see why. So, Pastor, if you would, please read uh, Luke 8. Luke 8. 22 to 25. All right, let's, say, let's read Luke 8. 22 to 25. Yes, sir. And... Uh, the Bible says, I'm actually going to read from the Amplified Version. This is what the Bible says. One of those days he and his disciple got into a boat, and he said unto them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out to sea. 23. But as they were sailing, he fell off to sleep, and a will, a will wind revolving from a below upward swept down on the lake, and the boat was filled with water, and they were in great danger. Mm -hmm. And the disciple came and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he, being thoroughly awakened, censured and blamed and rebuked the wind and the raging wave, and they ceased, and there came a calm. 25. And he said to them, why are you so fearful? Where is your faith? In my, ver my veracity and my integrity. And they were seized with alarm and profound and reverent dread. And they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even wind and sea? And they obey him. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Pastor, elaborate on that for us. The understanding for me is the Lord not only wanted to... First, these were one of the first acts that Jesus did with his disciples, one of the first acts of miracles that he did. And I was reading and I asked, my, I asked Lord, why was, why was this part of the first acts? I think here Jesus was trying to establish their faith from the jump. To show them, uh -huh. no matter what happens, do not be afraid. That's right. I will bring peace into your storm. I will be the peace into your life. Uh -huh. So, break that down for us. Why Why did Jesus choose to have them experience this act? Uh -huh. Actually, uh, I'll, 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 I'm actually looking at this, this verse a little bit different. I actually even read the same story in the book of Mark. In the book of mm -hmm. Mark, chapter 4, verse 35 to 39. It speaks about the same story. Yes, and it does. Here are the disciples, the 12 disciples, you know, with Christ. They came from an event and they were going to another event. Yes. But you got to understand that Jesus did not die yet at the cross. Yes. The disciples were with Christ, but they did not really have a pure understanding and revelation Christ was. Wow, wow, wow. So they, they, they were with Christ. They were following Christ. But they did not have a perfect understanding of who was with them. So <laughs> Jesus tells them, hey, listen, let's go to the other side. If they knew who Jesus was, mm -hmm. they wouldn't doubt what Jesus said when the wind came, came about. Amen. So Amen. When the wind came about, they forgot that Jesus said, let's cross to the other side. Yes. And sometimes when God tells you, let's go to another level, he doesn't tell you what you will encounter. Nope, he doesn't. Why are you going to, you know, to your, about your journey? God will pro probably not reveal you the storm, the situation, the obstacles that are in your way. But Amen. he wants you to just believe his word that let's cross to the other side. So the disciple heard that. But they mm -hmm. did not know that the person speaking was the creator of the wind, of the storm, of the sea, and everything else. So they got into Amen. the boat, and they were going, and the storm came about. And when the storm came about, the, the, there are certain version of the Bible says that when the, the water was getting in the boat, the mm -hmm. disciple tried to fix the situation. The Bible said mm -hmm. that they were trying to empty the boat by themselves. But mm -hmm. the more they were trying to empty the boat, the more the boat was getting filled with water. Correct. All right? So they, they, were, they, they, they tried by themselves to fix the situation. And at some point, they just got tired. It's like, hey, man, we're going to die here. We, we, yes. We're we, we, we going to die. The, the, this thing is just crazy. 
a certain version of the Bible says that that kind of storm that was happening around that moment was like a hurricane. Yes. Let, so let's just give an example of Hurricane Katrina. Mm-hmm. You're in the middle of the ocean, in the middle of the, 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 the river, and there's hurricane like a Katrina hurricane about blowing, you know, your, your, your boat and you're about to die. They Great. try to fix it yourself and nothing is working. You turn to God and he said to Jesus, they tell to Jesus, hey, you, you are sleeping when, while we are dying. Yes. You see, you see, their unbelief was so crazy to the point yes. that they said to Jesus, you are sleeping while we are dying. But I'll ask you a question, Daniel. Can somebody die? Somebody that is, is about to die can talk? No. No. <laughs> somebody that is, yeah, no. Somebody that is, is dying don't talk. If you die, you die. Right. But they, were, they had such an unbelief that they told Jesus, like, man, you are sleeping while everything is just going off in our life. You are sleeping at a moment we need you the most. Right. Let me tell somebody who's listening to me. At a, peer, at a point of your life where you feel like God is not with you, that's the very moment you really need to understand that God is really with you. Because Amen. the presence of God is not defined only by calmness, by peacefulness, mm. by by happiness. No, the presence of God is everywhere. So Amen. Jesus wake up and he, he, you know he speak to the wind because he's the creator of heaven. He speak to the wind and he calmed everything. And he look at the disciple. He tell them why you guys don't have faith. Amen. Why did he tell them that? He told them why you don't have faith because he already has spoken to them. Yes. Why did he tell them? Let's go to the other side. Yes. So Jesus just wanted them to believe that you're going to get to the other side. And I believe most of the time in our life, we, 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 we tend to, to be afraid when we forget what the word of God has said. Mm. When you forget what God has told you, when a storm hits your life, you will be afraid. You will yes. lose everything. You will lose your strength. You will start crying. You will be hopeless. But when you remember the word of God, the word of God will give you strength. That's why the Bible says that faith comes from what we hear. And what we hear comes from the word of God. When you re- remember what God has told you in your life, you will be rejoicing in the middle of your storm. Because you know that the one that has called me told me that I will go to the other side. He didn't tell me that I would die in the middle of, of the storm. He told right. me that I will go to the other side. Even if things are not working in my life, I can actually see that things are chaotic around me. Mm-hmm. But I know for a fact that I will get to the end of the tunnel. Amen. Amen. Wow, 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 wow. The Lord is truly is amazing. Uh, Pastor, the reason why I said that, because... Your your breakdown of this scripture is what was written on my notes here. So I don't yeah. even have to touch that because you already touched on everything. They did not understand who it was that told them, let's go to the other side. So therefore, they panicked at the first sight of danger. Just like us believers nowadays, the first second of danger, or when we hear something's going wrong, we panic. Whether it be death in the family, whether it be our, our health situations, whether it be our finance situations, we panic. We start to think, oh, Lord, why me? Why me? Why not you? He needs you to understand that even in the middle of the storm in which you call your life, the middle of, of, of your chaotic situation, your financial situation, he's right there. You might be thinking you're alone, like Pastor said, but you're not. So if you're listening to us at this very moment, just take a second and thank the Lord for being right there. Because we sometimes we forget, we really do forget the Lord did tell me, let's go to the other side. It was his idea to go to the other side. So therefore, I must hold on to his word. Um, you're right, Pastor. There's another version of this story in Mark chapter 4, verse 35, all the way to uh, 39, but or almost 41. But there's a part in verse 39 that I like, the exact same uh, example. I'm going to read it real quick. Um, the Bible says, the book of Mark chapter 4 Verse 20, uh, 39. And when all this was going on, a great storm came about. And like Pastor said, they were trying to fix it, but they couldn't. And there's a verse 29 where it says, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said on to the sea, Peace be still. 
and the wow. wind ceased, and there was a great calmness. Verse 41, it says, and he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Oh. How is it that you have no faith? 41 says, and they and, and, and they feared extremely. Like they were more even, they were more terrified of the person that just calmed this storm that we're about to die from. Oh. <laughs> and they kind of forgot just right then and there what Jesus just did. They were afraid and they were fearful. And then they marveled with one another saying, what manner of men is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? That's right. That's, that proves you that they didn't know who he was. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that right there just proves you that they didn't have a clue of what kind of guy is this. To, when the miracle happened, they, they were shocked and said, what kind of guy is this? Who is this guy? Where in the world is he from? Just to show you that they didn't have a revelation of who mm -hmm. Christ was. I'll, right. I'll give you a quick example with, before we, before we go, go into another phase of, the, of, 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 our, uh, of our interview today. Look at the, the life of Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter tells Christ that among all, I'm the one who loves you among all, my, all, all the disciples. And Jesus said, do you love me, Peter? He said, yes, I love you, Lord. He said, yes, you, will, you will denied me three times. Mm -hmm. And look here. Peter actually didn't believe what Jesus said. And when Jesus was arrested, they, mm -hmm. they, they, they asked Peter if he knew Christ. And he said he didn't know him. Right. And he actually lied three times just like Christ said. But Correct. after Christ died, after the resurrection, the Bible said that he spent 40 days speaking to them about mm -hmm. what concerns the kingdom of God. And the Bible mm -hmm. says in Luke chapter, I believe chapter 24, it tells them that the Bible says that Christ opened their understanding for them to understand the scripture. Yes. So after the death and the resurrection of Christ, they had a different understanding of yes. what Christ was. That's why Peter, the same Peter that denied Christ, was the same Peter that was able to stand in Acts chapter 2 to defend the gospel. So the yes. Peter that couldn't speak of Christ was able to speak about him boldly without yes. being afraid to the point of even putting his life online why because he had a revelation and that, that's mm. that's what i'm trying to emphasize is that when you have a revelation who god is the situation that comes in your life becomes an opportunity for god to reveal his glory any obstacle that comes in your life when you have a revelation who god is your situation becomes an opportunity for god to show off his glory amen Wow, 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 wow. Amen. The situation of our lives or things that we go through in life is just, like Pastor said, it's a moment. Uh, I remember a couple of weeks back, I was praying. I was just praying, praying, praying. And within prayer, and the Lord revealed and said, the moments when people think, right? When, when, when people think all is going wrong, like it all fails. Have we taken the chance to ask God to gain control of everything? Because here's where, even in the storm, like you said, they woke him up saying, hey, you're asleep. We're about to die. Why didn't they wake him up and say, save us? Like you said, Pastor, because they didn't understand who he was. In today's world, do we also take the chance or the, the second to take a step back and then look at everything else that's going on? To say, Lord, gain control of this. If we don't, I I strongly encourage and challenge everyone. Listen, we need to start practicing those habits. In the moment that the storm, like Hurricane Katrina, is taking place, I bet you there were people who were saying, "Lord, this is not what your this is not the final statement of my life. You did not show this to me because the Bible also tells us nothing will happen to you unless I show to my my my, my prophets and my servants to prepare you or to warn you. That's right. If it wasn't written for you, don't accept the storm. If it was not meant for you, do not panic and say, "Lord, wake up, I'm dying," because you're not. That's not what the Lord said. Pastor hit it on the head when he said, he said, let's go across. It was his idea, his words. They forgot that. And we see that in Mark, as soon as the Lord woke, wake, Jesus woke up and said, peace be still. 
the storm stopped, but yet they were still afraid and they became afraid of the person that stopped the storm. So we need to trust in the word of God. We need to understand the revelation when it comes to us is to give us another understanding, like Pastor said, to give us the, the, the deeper understanding of whom it is that's telling us all these things. And he will use his men and women to give us these messages. He will bring forth the way for us to understand. We just have to take a second and listen. Because this says the, 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 the disciples were afraid that even the wind and the sea obey. If the wind and the sea is obeying, what about you, the creator? That's right. Or the creature, sorry, the, the creature, will you obey your creator? Because he created you. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and when, when Jesus appeared to the disciples again, going back to uh, John 20, chapter 19, when he said, peace be unto you, when he first appeared to them, and he gave them another message, said, peace be unto you. As my father sent me, I'm going to send you. And the Bible says, and he breathed onto them the Holy Spirit. He gave them that understanding. He gave them that revelation. It's, it's almost like we know the answer to a question, but we refuse to state the answer to the question because we want to figure it out oh, right away. That's right. And, uh, and I'll just go, you know, pick point, pick point on what you just said right now. You know, when we go through a situation, we want God to come and fix our situation. Mm -hmm. But God actually don't want to be the one to be all, you know, to be invited in our situation when things go wrong. No, that's mm -hmm. not the will of God for us. God Correct. wants to live in us, to Amen. operate through us and fix the storm. Amen. And God lives in us through our faith. We shouldn't just call upon the name of the Lord when things go wrong. We need Amen. to have a lifestyle that pleases God, a lifestyle that allows the presence of God to dwell within us so hmm. that when the storm comes, the one that lives in us takes care of it. That's hey, what wow. Says. That's what Paul says. It's not me that lives anymore. It's Christ that lives, Christ lives through and me. If Christ be with me, hmm. who can be against me? It means when you have a relationship with God, when you mm. open your life for God to dwell in your life, you allow God to control, to command your life. And every storm that stands on your way, God mm. takes care of it because he lives in you. Amen. That's why even when you go through a storm, you don't cry because of your storm, but you praise through your storm because a storm is a temporary moment. It's not a perfect wow. moment. But the one that lives in me is eternal. And eternity will always prevail on what is temporal. And if Christ lives in me, any temporal situation that encounter my life will be taken care of. So wow. The will of God for us is to have a personal, a close relationship with the Father and allowing God to take care of our life. And take care Amen. of Amen. Amen, amen. And Pastor, as you're speaking, as you're speaking, you say that personal relationship with the Lord, and you build that relationship. The the the, the Spirit is speaking out to me and saying, just like the Bible says, Jesus says, the the one who says who loves me is like the one who builds their 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 life on a rock, a solid foundation, yeah. right? It's a stellar foundation. And what does Jesus say? That when the storm comes so he knows that there's going to be a storm he knows that it's going to be a shaky a rocky moment in your life it says when the storm comes though it hits that house it will not destroy the foundation because it is founded on a solid rock which is the word of god so wow the foundation of our our our, our belief in jesus christ him leaving living within us does prepare us for the storm next pastor saying does give us that ability to when the storm comes because we are already living in the presence of the lord because we're already living the lifestyle that pleases and honors the lord sure. we will be able to understand how to address said storms whether it be financial whether it be spiritual physical whether it be family friends work related no matter what the storm is god within us allows us to overcome it but it's only if you recognized he is within he who is within you is stronger and way mighty powerful than the one who's in the world so 
Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's just crazy. It's just blowing my mind. And I'm going all over the place with my spirit here. But there's one thing I'll say, and I'll probably close from there. The Bible says that Peter was asked, hmm. asked by God, by Christ. He said, everybody have a definition of who I am. But what do you guys say that I am? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Through the Holy Ghost, say to Christ, you are the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. And Jesus tell Peter. It's not flesh and blood that has revealed this unto you, but it's yes. the Father that has revealed it to you. You, yes. Peter, and upon that rock, I will yes. build my church, and yes. the gate of hell will not prevail. So mm. when the, Jesus said, upon that rock, he was not talking about Peter as a person. He was talking mm -hmm. about the revelation that Peter has given. And he said, Amen. I will build my church based on the revelation of who I am. And yes. every storm will never be able to prevail based on what I have built based on my revelation. And I'll tell somebody who's thinking right now, if your faith is built up on the revelation of Christ, whatever storm comes your way, Christ will take care of it. Because the Bible wow. says that the gate of hell will not prevail against the church. What kind of church? Not the church, that, not the church, the building, no. The person that is built up on the revelation of who Christ is. If you know who Christ, Christ is, the revelation within you will fight your storm and you'll become victorious. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, 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 wow. That's powerful. That is powerful. Yes, thank you, Lord. The, the, more, the more and more we go deeper into, deeper into this, the more and more I just want to just dig in and dig in. But the best thing about this type of conversations and this type of 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 shows and episodes that I believe is like I said at the beginning is to enlighten is to bring forth to the forefront of the person's perspective. Like, Hey, look, life gets hard. And I, this subject has been in my heart for the past almost a month now, pastor to mm -hmm. talk about it. And I truly believe that somebody's going to get blessed through yeah. this. Somebody's going to yeah. hear this and, and l l take a second and, and honor the Lord for this opportunity, this particular word. Like the Bible says in Romans chapter five, verse one, Romans chapter five. And I know pastor, this is your favorite book. I know Romans is one of your favorite books. <laughs> so when the Lord revealed me something in Romans, I'm like, ah, oh, pastor's going to love this. But here's what the Bible says. Romans chapter five, verse one, it says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God yeah. through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Being justified by faith, the foundation, the rock in which we're just explaining on where the foundation of, of where everything needs to be built and centered in. Being justified by faith, yeah. we have peace. Peace. Wow. That peace in which we have, like Pastor stated at the beginning, that's why when he started giving it, I'm like, Pastor, you're jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead. But, it, but it's amazing because... We're not right now in the same location, but God is able to speak to us through the spirit to understand yeah. how this message should be brought, brought forth into the life of his children today. So we know is through the justification of our faith in God that we have peace. We have peace with God through Christ Jesus, our Lord. That peace in which we have, like we read at the beginning, is the one that only Jesus gives. Yes, sir. Yes. Only Jesus, no one else. So if, if that special someone or that lady or that gentleman is talking to you right now saying, oh, I can give you the world, impossible. How can you give somebody something you don't have ownership of? That's, that's right. Talk to us now. How can you give somebody something that you don't know the outcome of that same thing within the next hour? <laughs> because the Bible says to our Lord Jesus Christ, one day is how many years? Thousands. Thousands. So if that special somebody's in your ear, my brother, my sister, they're talking to you, oh, I'm going to give you this. Like us, we Congolese people have to say, ah, it's not peso, nyoso, nyoso, lingin on peso. False. <laughs> they can't. They cannot. So don't fall trap into these, these uh, 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 illusions of this person makes me so happy. I'm going to be in peace. No, 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 no. Be at peace with the Lord. Be at peace. Be at peace with what God is giving you, and that's life. So if you live that life that honors the Lord in every sense of the word, by honor, I mean honors the Lord, yeah. you will understand that 
no matter if the storm comes, not even if, sorry, when the storm comes, the Lord is already going to give you peace. Because that peace that we have is within us, given to us yes. by our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We can't change that. We cannot change that. Our life is not our own. That's right. To say, I'm going to go out and do this. No, that's what the Bible says. We must not say tomorrow I will do this. No, we should say, if the Lord willing, if God willing, we were going to go and do this. Oh. Today I could have waken up and then that was it. That was it. The last thing I did was woke up and went right back to sleep. But no, I prayed and said, Lord, give me the ability to do the things I need to do today to make this a blessing day for others and myself. Pastor who just now flown into a city where he's in right now, God knows what could have happened. But it's God's will that keeps us. It's God's grace that allows us to do all these things. Oh, God. And through that, we understand the revelation of who Jesus Christ is, being our Lord and Savior. It's through the revelation and understanding, no matter what comes my way, they will stand on my left, they will stand on my right, but they will fall because the Word of God tells me so. Mm -hmm. So even in a moment of battle, I will have peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why didn't David run from Goliath? He had peace. Not only did he have peace, he had God within him. He had the Almighty oh. with him on his side. Mm -hmm. So why, why, why would I tremble in the face of Goliath? Oh. Why would I waver in the faith of the Philistines when I have God in my side? That's right, that's right. Men of God, you actually can go ahead and take your Bible and read this verse to just, speak. just uh, back up what you tr you're saying right now. The book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verse 31 to 33. You can just do it quickly from your version. Wait, wait, wait. John 16, give me a second. Okay, I'm there. 16, 30 what? 31 to 33. Okay. Jesus answered them and said this. Do you now believe? Behold, the hour has come. Yea, this is now that thou shall be scattered every man to his own and shall live me alone and yet i am not alone wow, wow. <laughs> yeah i am not alone because the father is with me Woo. these things i have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace Woo. wow in the world yes shall in the, in the world, you shall have tribulations. Mm, he already told them it was going to be there. But be of good courage. I will overcome the world. Amen. I won't even comment that. Jesus already, hey, hey, he already said, listen, you're going to encounter some storms. You will face some terrible situation. Sickness may come your way. You may lose your job. You may be persecuted at your job. You may lose your son, your daughter. You may lose a husband. You may lose a loved one. You may probably lose everything you have. But be of good courage. Mm. Be of good courage. I have overcome the world. That's what he told Joshua. Yes. That's I was just about to say that. So, yeah, you can go on. I won't, I won't comment too much. But you, you already <laughs> know what the word of God is saying. He has told us that we're going to encounter some storm, but hey, listen to me, my friend. He has conquered the world. We are, we are protected, taken care by the Almighty God. He's not the kind of guy that will lie to you. The Bible said that he's not a man, not a son of man that he shall lie or repent. Mm. What he says, he said, the plan that I have for you, it's not to harm you, but for you to prosper. Mm -hmm. So the plan of God for me is prosperity is blessing so no matter what i encounter i know what is the final say so wow. i may be sick right now but i know that by stripes i am healed so even if i feel sickness in my back i know it's a temporary storm my finished ending is healing so yes wow. Sir. wow may the lord be blessed may his word continue to to be revealed into the life of all who are listening right now. And pastor, the, the best thing about this verse, 
he says, I have overcome the world. Here he's speaking before he was captured. Here he's speaking before he was put on the cross, correct? Yes, sir. Giving them the fulfillment of the word, the final stages of the fulfillment of the word is victory. Yeah. The fulfillment of the word, the final stage of it is victory. So if we hold on to the word, the fulfillment of it is victory. The final stages of that word is victory. Victory belongs to us. Victory belongs to to our mighty Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we are the inheritance of that glory. We are the inheritance. The Bible says, I will strengthen you. I will give you courage. When the... When the battle comes, I will give you victory. He doesn't say if the Bible comes. When the battle comes. <laughs> when the Lord knows, my brothers and sisters, pastor, the Lord knows how every day is going to play out. So, my challenge tonight to, or, or my challenge today is to encourage everyone who's listening Thank the Lord, number one, to acknowledge your situation in your current stage because it could be worse, right? But the Lord has said he's not done with you yet. So if you're going through a storm right now, if right now your sea is rocky and it's ravy, you know, in Matthew, it talks about the same story. But in Matthew, it depicts, the in the Matthew, it says there were many small boats to give the reader an understanding. The boat in which they were in, could have probably killed them because that wave that was coming should not, the boat was not able to support that. Uh -huh. But their boat was okay because Jesus Christ was in that boat. Yes, yes. Jesus Christ told him to take this boat because I am in it. Jesus is in it with you. He has not left you alone. Uh -huh. Just like Job, when we always say Job has lo Job lost everything, this and that, Job did not leave everything, Pastor. Job never lost God. God was always with him, waiting to see if Job would understand that it's God's doing. That's why he said, my Redeemer surely is alive. <laughs> yes, sir. Job came to an understanding that God has always been there with me. So God will be with you. Just like we read in John chapter 16. He says, even when I'm alone, but I am not alone. So even when you think that you're alone, but you're not, because Jesus recognized that the Father is with him. So I am telling somebody today, the Lord is with you. That's right. That's right. The Lord is with you in this storm, in this crazy year that we're already enduring. And with the crazy year that passed be be behind us, the Lord never left us. Yes. He is a strong tower. If you're looking at the flyer of this particular podcast, I, I there was an image that I saw, the one with the boat on the sea and another one with the uh, lighthouse with the water hitting it. I just thank the Lord because that represents how he was with them in the boat. But the Bible also says the Lord is our strong tower. When I need something, when I'm a, I run to my my Lord because in there I am safe. Yes. With Christ Jesus, we are safe. We need to acknowledge and understand who he is so that peace that comes over us will give us the understanding of how to overcome the battle, overcome the storm. And we cannot overcome nothing without God. He tells them, without me, you are nothing. Uh -huh. And that wasn't him mocking them. He wasn't. He was giving them the true facts. Listen, without me, you can't do nothing. Uh, uh, uh. To acknowledge that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, with Him there is so much more to come. Uh. Without Him, we are limited of when tomorrow might come. Uh. You know, and there's so much we can say. There's so much we can do right now. But Pastor, I think the best way to close this, and I, 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 I know you got things you got to do. So we're going to be respectful of your time for this uh, this episode here. So two more questions and we're going to be out of here and you're going to close with a uh, prayer. Another question that we had. What does one must do to find that peace when the storm does happen? And I know we kind of just 
touched on it and we went kind of a little bit all over the place. So we apologize for the, the listeners. But when the spirit of the Lord starts to speak, you can't stop it, right? Um, what does one need to do? Somebody's listening right now and they're going through it. They're like really at their pretty much end point per se. What does one need to do to find that peace in their life right now? Oh, uh, well, uh, I will, uh, I, will try, I will ask you to read one verse. To, uh, if you don't mind taking it back. Of course not. Of, of Hebrew, Hebrew chapter 4. Read uh, uh, 14 to 16. Give me one second as I'm getting there. Hebrew 4. Okay, we are there. 14 to what? 16. <laughs> Uh, may the may God be uh, well. I, I'm. It's highlighted on my Bible already, but okay. The Word of God says this: Hebrew chapter four, verse fourteen to sixteen. Seeing that we have a great High Priest that is passed onto us. No, yes, yeah, sorry. That is passed onto the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. I repeat, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy to find grace to help in the time of need the word of god amen amen so uh, i'll quickly answer your question by saying that we don't serve a god that don't understand us no hmm. our god understand us the bible even says that he partake in our infirmity i'm actually going to mm -hmm. read from my version it's the amplified version if you will allow me i just i won't speak too much i just want uh Somebody to really, you know, captivate the, right. the will of God for us tonight, today. Uh, sorry. So I'll read for my version. Look at what the Bible says in my version. Please bear with me. No, go ahead. I know we've been reading a lot, a little too much, but it's really good <laughs> for us. But listen, yes, the Bible is. says that in as much then as we have a great high priest who has already ascended, and pass through the heavens, Jesus, mm -hmm. the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession of faith in him. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmity and the ability to assault it of temptation. Listen to here. We don't have a high priest who's unable to understand us. I want to tell somebody who's listening to me. We have a God that understands. Amen. Say that we again, have, Pastor. Say that we again. have a God that have been in our shoes. <laughs> it mm. was it was hundred percent man, hundred percent God. And yes. when he was a man in the flesh, that's why we call him the Son of God. Son of God only means God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Are you listening Amen. to me? He, 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 he had to be he had to be a human to be able to save you and me. He couldn't mm. save us from his throne in heaven. He had to take a body of a human, die at the cross, feel betrayed, feel forsaken, feel like nobody cares for him. He felt Amen. all that for you. We have a God Amen. that understand us. But not only that he understands us, the Bible says that he has been tempted, tempted in all things. So there's no any kind of temptation that you've been through that God hasn't been through yet. Jesus has right. been through it all. And he understands when you go through temptation. But what I like about the word, of God, the word of God, the Bible says that, but who also has been tempted in every aspect as we are yet without sinning. Meaning, God had victory over every temptation that you are facing. And if you can mm. hold on to what he has told you, believe in me and you shall be saved. If we all believe in him, everything that we're facing will be able to overcome it. And I would like to really, really speak to somebody listening to me that feel betrayed, that feel like life is beating them down. That feel like nobody's nobody's for them. It's like the world is against you. Everything happening in your life is like against you. I want to tell you that Jesus 
understand you. Amen. He understands your failure. He understands what you've been through. But beyond understanding you, he has a solution for you. Amen. He's, he, he's a peace that no man can offer. You know, mm. the good thing about God, not, on, not only that he gives peace, but he's the peace made flesh. Mm. So when he gives you peace, he's actually giving you himself. Hell, wow. So, you, you know, there's no man on earth that can tell you, hey, baby, I love you and I'll die for you. No, 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 they, they, they're lying because they won't be able to die for you. But we have a man that died for us. Whew. We have a man that made himself everything that we are facing. And I want to tell somebody, is love made flesh. He is peace made flesh. Hmm. He is salvation for us. He is everything Amen. in one for us. And everything you're looking for, you won't find it at your job. You won't find it in your marriage. You will not find it in a relationship. You will not find it in money. You will find it in Christ. He is our life. He is our hope. He is our strength. He is everything we're looking for. Every time you wake up in the morning going to your job, it's not money that you're looking for. It's actually happiness. You're just trying to be happy. That's why you wake up every morning, going to work, trying to find stability. It's only because right. you want to be happy. Actually, somebody asked me, why do you work? I'm like, I want to work because I want to have money. He said, why do you want to have money? Oh, I want to have money so that I will live comfortably. He asked me, why do you want to live comfortably? He said, well, I want to live comfortably because I want to be happy. So the, the, the handling mm. of what we are all looking for, striving for every day is happiness. And guess what? Jesus is our happiness. Amen. The person that has found him has found everything. Amen. Wow. 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 And Pastor Sting, I just want to pinpoint on that. You're right. That question is a deep question because I've read a book one time and saying, in order for us to get what we want in this world, we have to substitute something else for it. So you will substitute time to create the wealth. You will substitute the wealth to find the idea of happiness. But in Christ Jesus, we don't have to substitute anything. We just have to go to him and we will find the peace. What we're looking for to work for the, the to, to get more money, to make more money, to have peace. We don't have to substitute anything in Christ Jesus, but just give our hearts and we will find that peace within this storm that we're dealing with. Wow, 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 wow. The Lord is great. The Lord is great. Lord, I thank you for this day. Pastor, we are coming to a conclusion of this uh, podcast episode here. Uh, I, I, there's no need to ask this last final question because we just touched on it and you elaborated further than uh, I would have hoped. And thank you for taking the time i just want to end with this one last verse if you can read on your version pastor isaiah 26 verse 1 to 3 well one scripture but the main key verse yes isaiah 26 1 to 3 the key verse is verse 3 okay isaiah chapter 26 verse 1 to 3 the bible say in that day shall this song be sung in the land of judah we have a strong city. The Lord sets up salvation as walls and bulwark. Open the gates that the uncompromising righteous nation which keeps her faith and her mm. throat with God may enter in. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace mm. whose mind, both its inclination and its character is stayed on you. Because he commits himself to you, lean, leans on him, and hopes confidently in you. Amen. You will find comfortable and perfect peace. The King James Version, just that verse 3 says, Thou shalt be kept within him in perfect peace, whose mind is stated on thee because you trust in him. That's right. The peace that we, we get... I like the first verse says, on this day, we will sing a new song. My brothers and sisters, I'm telling you right now, no matter what you're going through, there will come a day, a moment, a second where you'll sing a new song. And that song will be sung because you understand that Jesus Christ gave you the victory. But before the song is sung, you got to understand he's the one controlling everything. So when you give yourself back to him, when you give yourself 
fully onto him, your heart is able to experience all these things. That day doesn't have to be further than what now? That day doesn't have to be in three weeks, five weeks. No, that day could be right now. The second that you understand that God is in control, the second that you stand up and say, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I want to go back to what his plan for me is. That song will start be is, is starting to be written up. And my brother always tells me every time you pray just know your prayer is creating chaos in the enemy uh in, in the field of, of of the enemy and i'm like yeah that's true so every time i pray i know my prayer is making the enemy mad because the enemy does not want us to be close to the lord the enemy wants us to be so far away from god's word that we believe in the storm that we think the storm is natural no 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 my brothers and sisters exception is not normality there have been some times where we've been accepting to do certain things just because the world tells us, but that's not the normal way that God wants yeah. us to live. God's will for us is not to live in the exceptional ways of the world. No, God's will for us is to obey and be with him. God's will for us is to serve and honor him. God's will for us is to live our life just as he planned it. For the Bible also tells us, I have a plan for you. My thoughts for you, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ends. God understands what we're going through. You're not alone, like Pastor stated. You are not alone. So that day when you're singing that song, like Pastor Billy loves to sing, when he's singing that song, he knows I am singing because I have peace in my Lord. I am singing because I know salvation, like the Bible says here, salvation is God's and it is is appointed into the walls of my life. And he knows that God is with him. Pastor, I want to thank you. Thank you for being with us this evening. I hope you enjoyed our, our, our platform here. And I pray that we get another opportunity. God willing, uh, one, you know, one of these days coming up, we get an opportunity to have you back on the show again, to share another topic, um, you know, that he will put in our hearts. Any last words before we well, ask you to I, I personally thank you and thank everybody, thanking everybody that took a chance to listen to this podcast. And uh, I believe it's not by mistake that you listen to this. I believe through this podcast, God is working, uh, doing a work in your heart, in your soul, and in your spirit. And I believe that uh, the word of God that has been revealed unto us today is for our blessing. And I would like to thank you, uh, men of God. Uh, Minister Daniel, for having me. It's, uh, it's has been an honor. And uh, I can tell you that uh, I was blessed as well, just being able to listen to you, uh, you know, going going deeply in the in the Word of God and explaining this uh, subject and giving different insight. Uh, I thank you for having me, and uh, uh, God bless everybody listening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. As always, we always end this. Ep- we always end all of our episodes with a prayer. Um, you know, because we understand that although we are here saying all these things, like you said, Pastor, but we know the true, the true, true, uh, our person that reveals and gives forth understanding is our Lord Jesus Christ. So we always end it with a prayer that everything was said and anything that was talked about will touch the heart of his children just as he wants it to. Like the Bible says, every word that comes down from heaven is for a reason. Um, just like the rain comes down to water the grass, the word comes down to give life and heal. So would you please do us the honor and giving us the closing prayers and we'll be out for the rest of the day. Father God, we thank you. We give you, Lord, for this opportunity, for giving us the ability to connect to this podcast and listen to this wonderful word. And the Bible says that uh, uh, I will purify you by the truth and the truth that comes from my word. I thank you for giving us the ability to listen to your word and be saved. And I believe right now that you are still saving. You are still healing. You are still setting free. And I believe that your word has come forth to set free somebody. Right now, Father God, I pray. If anyone listening is going through a storm, going through a situation that is exceeding their understanding and their capacity to control it. I pray that you intervene and give you peace. Like you told the disciple, I give you my peace. Like no one else gave. Not like the world gave. But I give you my peace according to the Holy Ghost. Let your peace be with everybody listening right now. Let your peace 
captivate the situation, the life of everybody right now. And I declare right now that the enemy is losing every control that he has over your children. I pray that the enemy is losing every control that he has over your over every family, over every every individual that will be able to listen to this broadcast. I declare freedom. I declare freedom. I declare freedom of freedom of mind. Peace of mind right now. Peace of the soul right now in Jesus' name. Everybody that is sick, I declare right now that you are healed in Jesus' name. If you are sick in your body, sick in your soul, sick in your heart, sick in your mind, I declare right now that you are healed. And if, 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 if there's somebody right now listening to us who has never experienced salvation, who has never really received Christ as, as their Lord and Savior, Father, I pray that you forgive their sin and that you enter their heart and establish your domain in your life. You are the God that forgives sin, forgive all sin. Set us free from ourselves. Set us free from everything that is stopping us to experience a, a perfect relationship with you. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will sustain us and keep us obedient to your word. We thank you for this precious moment. We thank you for this podcast and for your servant. Let, let you open doors so that this podcast will be, will be even known to thousands and millions of people so that so many others can come to the knowledge of, your, of you, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. We give you the glory and the honor for all that you have done and all that you will do. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you for a powerful prayer. Pastor, go ahead and let the people know where they can find you if they have any questions, um, social media, um, however you would like to be contacted. Of course, we're not going to give out your personal information. Just let them know where they can reach out to you for more questions if uh, they would like. Well, well, physically, I'm actually a pastor at a church established in Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, you you can go uh, on, on, on social media. Our church is called IMCM International Missionary Center of Messenger in Boston, Massachusetts. You can find me on social media. My Instagram name is Billy G Sabu. You can find me on Facebook. My page is Pastor Billy Grace Sabu Official. You can find me on YouTube everywhere. You can contact us or send us a message, and we'll be more than glad to be of an assistant to anyone who can reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And Ed, for our listeners, as always, you can find us on Instagram as well, too. Young Evangelist Ministry underscore Straight Talk Podcast. Um, all media, all social media platforms, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Google Podcast, we're on there. Just look up Straight Talk or Y-E-M underscore Straight Talk and you will find us. May the Lord bless you all. May the Lord keep you and have a blessed rest of the day. Thank you.